Recently, my friend Fiverr put out a new game and because I'm gonna be meeting them in person for the first time in Ireland of all places, I decided to commemorate this event by making a warband based on their game. That's it, that's, that's the whole thing, that's the video. We're here, we're in it. If you've been following me for a while, you already know the drill by now. I don't really play war games, but I'm a sucker for cool concepts and rich world building. Fiverr's game, Snack 28, is self-described as the game of ultra-violent candy cannibalism. It's a snack-eat-snack world out there, and you don't want to be the one with an empty plate when the dinner bell of death starts ringing. Besides the toothsome lore, your warband or snack is only comprised of three models, which means if you don't already have some food-based minis, it's pretty easy to get a few put together. I have no idea if we'll have enough time to play a game when I get to Ireland, but since I want this to be done quickly, my idea is Candy Kingdom from Adventure Time meets Extreme Close-Ups from SpongeBob SquarePants. So round, candy-shaped bodies with realistic proportions for arms and legs. Let me dig into my Perry Miniatures Knights so I can show you what I mean with some sticky putty. It seems like the easiest thing to do would be to just get some two-part epoxy and sculpt around the existing body of a miniature. The problem with this though, is getting a good seam around the waist. To keep that spherical candy shape, the better move is to find or make spheres and then chop the arms and legs to fit the bodies so that we keep a nice surface on these merry medieval morsels. While pondering this delightful task that I've given myself, I was digging into my junk box looking for some bits that I could use as roughly candy-shaped torsos, and nothing was calling out to me. So I decided to approach this meal from another angle. In thinking about what candy I wanted to represent my tart trio, my mind went to jawbreakers or gobstoppers, depending on where you grew up and how much Ed, Ed, and Eddie you watched. Specifically though, these with the primary color paint splatter. So I grabbed my polymer clay, and after doing very quick research online, I found a tutorial from Creators Joy and started experimenting, making my own jawbreakers. What you want is some brand new white clay, as clean as possible, and then cut very small pieces of your primary colors. Dot those all over the exterior of the white clay, and then roll it into a snake. After that, fold the two ends onto one another, and repeat that step three times. Then you can roll up the clay into a ball and pop it into the oven to bake. Now that we've got our confectionery cores, we can start wrapping up this project. Now, I have something to admit. Um, I intentionally glazed past one of the core mechanics of Snack 28 that I love very dearly, and that's that it's not just PvP. It's a PvPve game. So there is a, an enemy, a monster on the board that is trying to eat both your and your opponent's snacks. And while I was digging through my bits box, I found this Hubba Bubba container and I would just be completely remiss to not turn it into a taffy terror of some kind. As an avid fan of the Craftsman, I know that we need to start off by sanding this plastic to make sure we get some good glue adhesion. I think the hot glue that I'm going to use would work either way but eventually I'll want to paint this, so I might as well get it ready now. I'm using some kitchen foil to bulk out the shape of our monstrous gums before going back and adding in rows and rows of pointy teeth. If you've ever watched any of my sculpting videos, one of my tips for leftover epoxy clay is to roll it up into small shapes. I make spheres, teeth, tentacles, all kinds of things because I know that eventually I'm gonna need them in the future. A mix of epoxy clay will make up the majority of the texture and detail around the eyes, 
But to get that gooey effect for some melting gums around the teeth, I'm just putting hot glue directly onto our foil and letting gravity do the work for me. The last and frankly most important detail is giving this thing a chewy tongue. Using some EVA foam, I cut long strips, rolled them up on themselves, and with a bit of super glue, I'm ready for big bubbles and no troubles. Also, with the leftover foam, I cut up some paver stones for some quick and simple gingerbread basing. Fiverr has done an amazing job of building unique terrain, designing original characters that you can actually download and print, by the way, and just demonstrating the world of Snack 28 overall. Looking at photos from their Instagram, I'm honestly just color matching some of their existing work. For the majority of this project, I'm using my primary color paints and mixing each batch until I'm happy with the result. However, because I want to get this done quickly, I'm also breaking out some artist and miniature paints just to get me across the finish line. The armor for our Gobstopper goons will be a cool blue steel, matching my favorite character from the game, all sorts. I normally wouldn't paint each of the limbs on their own, but I'm way too scared to accidentally ruin my imitation hard candy, so I have all the arms and legs just blue tacked down to a piece of card. I'm also painting the rims of each of their bases in different primary colors to help distinguish them in-game, but also because it's fun and you should paint the rims of your bases. The chewing gum mimic came up very organically. Once I started doing the pink of the gums, working from more saturated to desaturated tones, I realized that if I painted the container in a sour apple green, that this monster would be watermelon flavored, and I'm a huge fan of watermelon. All that was left to do was the, quite frankly, painful and delicate operation of gluing our gumball guardians together and getting ready for the trip to Dublin. So I just got home from a very delayed, very late flight from Dublin, but I had a fantastic time hanging out with Fiverr, exchanging gifts, and just honestly geeking out about our obsession with tiny things. Now, for some important news, if you haven't already seen it over on Instagram, there is a competition going on for Snack 28. You need to make a monster, a food, a candy themed creature to kitbash, sculpt, model, whatever your medium is for the game Snack 28. Myself, Dana Howell, and Fiverr will be judging all of the entries, and our favorite pick is not only going to get immortalized into the game, but you're also going to win a voucher for Ramshackle Games, who is sponsoring the contest. So if you liked this video, if you want to get in on the candy cannibal madness, make something for the game, share it online with this hashtag, and we will be looking at all of the entries on Halloween, October 31st. That is the deadline, so go, go, go. Finally, and probably most importantly, be sure to check out the links in the description of this video so you can follow Fiverr, download Snack 28, and just enjoy some candy carnage. If you enjoy this video or anything else that I do, consider subscribing to the channel, supporting me over on Patreon, and joining our coven where you get access to all kinds of bonus content, ad-free videos a week before anyone else, and most of all, a very sweet Discord community where you can come and hang out. But that's it. That's all I got for today. Until next time, I'll see you soon.